All right, if it's okay with you, I'm going to sit down. If not, I'll pace back and forth. I'm a big fan of one-to-ones, one-to-35s or so, not, not really a fan of. So, But no, happy to be here. So thankful for this opportunity. So my story really started back. Um, I was raised in a military family, so my father was Air Force. We moved all across the U.S. Um, my fun fact is I've lived in every state that starts with the letter O. And if your mind works like mine does, for those of you that are trying to think what that is, that's Oregon, Oklahoma, and Ohio. So not the most exciting states, but <laughs> still beautiful nonetheless. So um, at 14, I got into construction, roofing, um, always had been working early on anything as a young entrepreneur, you know, mowing lawns, um, snow shoveling, anything to make a dime at that point. Uh, realized getting into roofing, I didn't want to do that to my body long term, <laughs> so I needed a different career. Um, got really serious about just math, business, finance when my grandfather, before he passed away, um, he owned his own business and got to learn from him uh, throughout the summers when I would go, get to go spend time with him. Um, just, just really about how you can use business to impact people, how you can hire, you can give people opportunities, you can help them grow, you can impact the community. It was really, if you, if you watch my grades after that moment when he passed away, um, I really started to get serious about what I was up to and what I was doing. Uh, so graduated at 16. People tease me, I've, I've done things early my entire life. <laughs> so graduated at 16, finished a bachelor's degree out in three years. Uh, there was a span of time. Um, one, of, one of those exciting jobs, I was, I was working full time, time while going through school as well, because one of my personal goals was graduating debt free, um, just to be able to open myself to any opportunity that came my way afterwards. Um, one of the fun jobs that I had was working at a medical school. And I always say my life is a series of me standing up in front of people and wondering why are people listening <laughs> to me at this moment. So um, my job at the age of 18 was teaching med students that were in their encore career. So I worked for a medical school and I was teaching them how to build resumes, how to build a career, go out and get jobs. So that was half my job. The other half of it was going out and actually securing employment for them, getting them internships, um, getting them jobs and securing employment. So my, my claim to fame there was I was able to secure an agreement with the third largest employer in the state of Ohio for them. So all our students going forward could get internships and jobs at that location. So knew I always wanted to be in finance though, and I wanted to be in my career field before I graduated. So got a job at a private equity group out in Ohio. Um, loved the opportunity. They gave me an amazing opportunity to start before I finished my bachelor's degree. Had such an amazing team that poured into me. Ultimately, I was able to work up my way to head, head analyst on the entire portfolio. So we had about two and a half billion dollars in assets. So you can imagine it's a very cutthroat industry, uh, a lot to learn. It's very intense. And what I started to realize, I had a mentor that asked me, he just, he said, you know, who are you making an impact on? And is it who you want to make an impact on for the rest of your life? And that hit me <laughs> like a brick wall. And I couldn't answer. I couldn't give a good answer. Months later, I couldn't give an answer to that. And it just stuck with me. At the same time, um, I had been married. I, I made the mistake of taking a Colorado Springs native from the beautiful mountains to the plains of the Midwest. Don't make that mistake ever again. <laughs> and I also started looking, you know, at that point, I have a wife and two young kids. Um, you know, I was, I was finishing a bachelor's degree. I was getting promoted out of my job. We were flipping a house. We were buying a rental. So we were, we were doing some things. But started to realize, you know, I... If I want to stay married <laughs> and keep my kids, um, something's going to have to change. Um, and I need to put a support system around my family and my wife and my kids and start to focus more on that because I was luckily to learn from an early age that you can make money at a lot of things, but it's like, what, what are you doing with your life that actually matters? Um, so I went to my wife and said, hey, you know that thing where every two weeks we get a nice paycheck that comes in, we know exactly the dollar amount, maybe it's even higher sometimes, right? That's a big surprise. What if we, we got rid of that sense of security <laughs> entirely? What if, we, what if we didn't know what we were going to make? What if we didn't know what we were going to do? What, what if we didn't know whether we were going to be successful or not? And she's like, all right, like, <laughs> just, just keep a, a roof over our heads, right? But she's supported me along, along the way. So we moved out here. Um, I ended up getting my licenses and fi financial planning and insurance while I was doing some more private equity consulting and built a practice up fairly quickly. It was more of a franchise model. I um, was able to hire an admin in the first year and really, really loved what I was doing. It was the perfect blend of taking investment management experience with building personal relationships. But it was really at the start of COVID, um, 
you know, right when that first two to three weeks period when we're all worried about food, shelter, water, toilet paper, you know, the, those type of things, business slowed down for a minute. And I got to reflect on what, what, what do I actually want to do? Like, who do I want to serve? Who do I want to get out of bed every day for? And, you know, what, what do I want to do when I grow up, right? What I realized is every single conversation that I had with an entrepreneur, a business owner, a real estate investor that had a vision bigger than themselves. So they want to make a lot of money, but they also care about the footprint they're leaving on the community around them, the lives that they're touching along the way. And it's not a someday, you know, someday I'll leave my money to this foundation. It's what are we doing here and now to touch the lives of folks around us. I realized every conversation I had, I got adrenaline from those. So really this journey started um, towards, you know, selling my practice and starting this business with the desire of how do I have more of those conversations? How do I make more? from those conversations, which is ultimately, how do you drive more value to those folks? Yes. So you moved away from financial planning and you opened up Atmos. What the heck is it? What Great question. <laughs> so yeah, so just to be clear, I'm not a financial planner. We're not a financial advisor. We don't manage investments. We don't sell insurance. Um, so we are a personal CFO services company. The next question after that is what the heck is a personal CFO, right? So for us, it's a dedicated strategic thinking and planning partner to empower business owners, entrepreneurs, and real estate investors to maximize their net worth, their impact, and their quality of life. Yes. So I know for a fact that you've been working personally, but you go above and beyond just the strategizing. Can you talk about how you Helped businesses here? Yeah, absolutely. So what we discovered, so part part of that journey was speaking to over a hundred plus business owners in a six month period. I had a personal crusade of mine, just asking questions. And my goal was to learn what are their struggles, what are their challenges, what you know, what opportunities do they face, where do they go and get their advice? And what we discovered was really as business owners, you're wearing how many hats? <laughs> we all we all know that we're stretched for time, you know, we're People are trying to build businesses that are bigger than themselves. They want to grow a team. They, you know, visionary entrepreneurs are always on to that next idea, right? So we we discovered you have personal goals and you have business goals, right? Not really revolutionary, but a dollar inside of your business is not a dollar towards a vacation with your family and another house, right? You know, a bigger house that your spouse, you know, growing your family, right? And so what we found was the spheres of advice of where you can go on the personal side. You know, you, you can get a life coach. You can get, you know, your person that files your taxes. You have a realtor. Um, that list can go on, you know, financial planner, investment advisor, insurance. On the business side, you can get a business coach. You can get a CPA. Um, you can get a consultant, right? And then amongst all that, friends and family always have an opinion on what <laughs> you should be doing with your wealth and your business. And what we discovered was... Business owners, you know, there were three people out of those hundred that used the specific phrase, were lost in a sea of advice. And because of that sea of advice, we're lost and we're not taking action. So visionary business owners, they have all these ideas, they have all these concepts. And a lot of the advice that, you know, they find, you know, whether it be from your insurance person, your CPA person, everyone gives advice based on how they're compensated, what you hire them to actually do, and then their education background and experience. When was the last time all those people in those spheres of influence in your life sat down at the table with you all together and collectively said, here's why we're giving this advice because we're looking at the here and now and what we need to take care of. The other individual over here, we're giving this advice because we're looking at the, the next 30 years, right? And a lot of that defers and competes. So where we come in is we help business owners ask the right questions and understand because our team has a broad experience in just these various facets of business and then we help bring that back to their values. Because at the end of the day, it's your values that drive your decisions. Like I'm very math oriented, I'm very analytical, but sometimes the numbers don't matter. It's what do you want for yourself? What impact do you want to create along the way? So what that falls into is yes, we come at it from a financial basis of we're planning cash flow. We're, we're starting to plan long-term what your wealth looks like. We're starting to connect you with the right investment advisor, the right insurance people, because those are all core key people that you need to have in your life. And then that falls into, we get the calls of like, hey, we need to hire somebody. Like, how do we go about doing it? And we're saying, you need, you need to talk to someone from HR, right? Um, and we're starting to connect those professionals because we're, we're not an attorney, right? We're not gonna file your LLC paperwork, but we can do tax efficiency planning to tell you, hey, you need to be an S-Corp. 
this is the person that can do the paperwork and file this for you. So, sorry, I just took it upon myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't see the other hand. Um, so when working with Atlas Planning, what does that process look like for an entrepreneur? Where, where, what's the start and you know, what's that kind of cost look like to work with you? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so the question was, what's, what's the cost to work with us? What's the process? What's that actually like, right? So first you know, and foremost, it always starts with a conversation. So we, we always tell people, hey, we're, we're interviewing you as much as you're interviewing us. We've honestly turned away more people than we actually work with today because I'm, I'm so specific on, again, I'm only gonna work with people that every moment of every day I'm passionate to work with. And that's exactly like all my other team members, like that's what I expected them. Like they're never, we, we're not at a place where we have to bring in revenue. So we have to take people that we're, we're not excited about. <laughs> so after that conversation, it's really driving out what we need. So the overlying process is we don't have this five step plan for wealth that we try to cram people through. It's, we start with what are your numbers today? And where are you at today? What do those actually tell you? And I'll back up there. It's, it's never as clean as it's described by the business owner. We always know it's gonna be messier than it really yeah. is described. So what are those numbers telling us? And then where do we need to go from here? What action can we take today? And then how do we turn that into a strategic plan and execute on that plan? And what we found is yes, dreaming about five years, 10 years, that's important. Like let's start to map that out. What do we need to do this week? What do we need to do this month? just to make sure we're start. Because the fun thing about the people we work with, they're always gonna have new ideas. So that 10 year picture is going to change week by week, month by month. So let's focus on the here and now, what do we need to be doing? So after that, so as far as like cost is concerned, so we work purely on a monthly basis. So we only work with people that we know we're gonna be with for the next 20, 30 plus years. The way our contract reads is a month to month. So we're providing value each and every month. We're not gonna work with people if they're not happy or can't see the value, right? Um, so those price ranges, you know, some, you know, we start with businesses, we try to find an entry point that works for most people. So, th you know, we have people that start at $300 a month, we've got people that are 30 to $50,000 a year, depending on the size of their business. What are the plans for Atmos? What are the plans for Atmos? There's a, there's a lot. So this started officially, you know, I, I sold my practice in October, started this business November 3rd. Um, we hit year one projections in like month one and a half. <laughs> so it's growing much faster than I would have ever imagined. We're already up to a team of five other people besides myself. Um, so we're gonna continue to look to, you know, to pace that growth and continue to grow. Um, one of the other things we're really excited about is we've been approached by several nonprofits that are wanting our services. And a lot of where we provide our value in the personal CFO services around the tax planning side. Like we typically say business owners, 20 to 30% in taxes, even if you have a bookkeeper that you're working with already for nonprofits, right? That's not really, really the case. So we, you know, for me, we didn't want to just be another nonprofit consultant that's out there or just someone that writes grants or anything like that. So what we've done is we packaged together kind of our personal CFO model with a grant writer that we've hired. And our goal and mission is to impact these nonprofits that are giving back to communities. So the way we do it is we basically give our personal CFO services for a year for free to provide value. And then we bring our grant writer along to help them write grants. The only time they ever write us a check is if we're bringing them, you know, $100,000 or more in grants. So our, our goal for these nonprofits is it's not a cost for them until they're actually making nine to 10 times what we brought them. You're a focal point for business services, but you don't provide any of the business services that the businesses need. What's your vetting process for the companies you partner with? Great question. So the, that, that question was, you know, so we don't, you know, we don't provide accounting services. We don't file taxes. I took enough accounting classes in, in college to know I don't want to be an accountant, right? Um, and there's, you know, we don't sell insurance. We don't manage stocks and bond portfolios, right? So you need those people in your life. So how do we vet those people that we work with? Again, it comes back to a conversation. Like we've got to be able to trust you. The way I look at it is if I'm giving somebody a referral, right? Or partnering with them, my reputation is on the line. And that's, and that's the same way, like when people refer us as well, like we take that same weight of like, we see your reputation on the line with us and that's the way we view the relationship. So really it's around trust. We always try to go in there and if they already have their CPA in place, if they have their investment advisor in place, 
great. Like we're going to work with them. And a lot of that takes a conversation with them directly to say, here's why we're here. Here's what we do. Like, and we need you at the table. Like, and, and we're actually, typically we're, we're bettering the relationship between the client and their advisor. You know, one perfect example, we have a client that her insurance person told her she needed this disability policy for a year and a half and tried to sell this disability policy. And it, and it never, you know, never was able to click with her. We were able to sit down and through some of our foundation work said, hey, we need to make sure that you're taken care of in these situations. Like, why haven't you done this yet? And it's like, I'm not sure. So she went and so the advisor calls me up and was like, How, what did you say to her? Like, why, like, why is she calling me up? Why are we making the sale now? And it was simply, we can come at it from a point of, we don't get a commission, we don't get a kickback for anything, like other than them getting what they want for themselves out of life. So when you're taking on a business line, you got to do a deep dive into the financials and, and kind of look for inefficiencies and, and all that stuff? Or? Absolutely. So yeah, it starts with what are the numbers today? So it's deep dive. A lot of times if they're managing their books on their own, we're getting them a bookkeeper, an accountant to get that off their plate. Because one of the other things we're trying to convince business owners of is what is your billable rate? What's the do dollar value for every hour of time? So if you can go out and your billable rate is $300 an hour to your clients, can you pay a bookkeeper $50 an hour to get this off your plate? They're gonna do a lot better job because most business owners didn't start their business with the goal of let's keep our finances in order, let's keep our balance sheet set, let's make projections and everything like that. It's They started out of a passion to do what they love and impact the people they wanna impact. So it's absolutely a deep dive we go. Um, you know, I, I always tell them the first couple months is going to be the most painful part of the process because you're going to beat your head against the wall as we ask you these questions because I have to know exactly what your picture is before we can move forward. How do you um, get business owners to let go? To let go of um, stuff because we're, we're really um, controlling. I mean, that's why we <laughs> got to where we are. And how do you get us to let go of uh, stuff we you know, it, the control factor, how do you do that? Yeah, so the question was, how do we get business owners to let go control of, of their baby, right? As, as these, there's all these different hats they wear and so a lot of times it's because they know they can do it better than anyone else, right? So how, how do we go about doing that? One, one of our metrics, so we don't work on financial minimums, like we work with companies that netted $30,000 last year to people that are gonna gross $18 million this year. So. One, one thing we work with people on is on a goal minimum basis. So we have to have a minimum goal of creating a million dollar gross revenue business or more. The reason for that is because we found there's not many businesses you can go out and make a million dollars gross by yourself. So most of the people that have that goal understand, hey, we have to have a team or we're already hiring a team. So they're already in the mindset of like, in order to grow, everything's an investment. There's a return on this investment and I'm going to have to let go of things. That doesn't mean it's easy, right? But we start to work through and we can show, here's, here's your, the value of your time, right? Here's the value of you being able to go home earlier to your spouse and your kids. What is that, right? And then we start to work, you know, work them so that they're running the business versus it running them. Yes. What was your expansion? You said you met your year in, your first year growth in a month and a half and you're expanding faster than you thought you were. How has that changed your expansion? So I'd say, so our, our BHAG is in 15 years, we're going to have 500 personal CFOs and a staff and a system of support behind them. Um, some of the other opportunities that have come up along the way that we weren't expecting, of course, was the nonprofit. Um, we're also in the middle of, we're launching a, a subsidiary that's going to be um, a real estate investment company. Um, backed by a couple hedge funds um, that will start raising 20 to $30 million. And that's our goal is that's a tool to use to help business owners grow their wealth to give back to the community and to create that legacy for their family. So I'd say like the growth absolutely was unexpected, right? But I'd still, we're still driving towards that big goal out 15 years from now. Yes. So as entrepreneurs, we all have a hard story that is core to who we are that separates us from all the other businesses. And then you have your foundational values, but for yourself, outside of your business, what's an experience that you want to have? How do you want to grow? And how do you want to contribute to society? 
Yeah, absolutely. So over the past year, I got really clear on what my calling is. And my calling is people are empowered to pursue what they love. So that shows up really in my goals. That shows up in every area of my life. Um, but also it started with me having to create a life and a business and a team around me that like I, I absolutely love what I do every single day. Like there's, you know, there's sometimes, yeah, you're working until 11 o'clock at night or midnight or anything like that. But there's not ever a point in time where I'm like, I'm not excited about what we're doing. So in order for me to be able to do that, I had to get really crystal clear on what I wanted for myself and my family and the impact, what I want to create. My passion at the end of the day is small business. And I can, I can nerd out on this <laughs> for people. But if you look at the way our infrastructure spending is, if you look at the grants, the money coming from the top from the government, the way it's allocated, it's we're actually really setting up ourselves for failure over the next 20 or 30 years. So a lot of my mission as goal is one, help build small business in the community. And then two, it's a revenue generating source that we can start to impact policy um, and the ecosystem for small business. I'm not sure I really have a question, but I just want to say that I'm honored that you're a part of One Man Cup. I'm super impressed. I, I mean, I've known you for almost, or just over a year now. And um, I'm really happy for you that you are much younger than most of us in the room, that you have what I think most of us want is a business that we're passionate about, that <coughs> kids, but we also can receive that income in your family life. It's the whole package. So. I don't think there's really a question there, but um, it's impressive, and I'm really, really happy to be able to say. Thank you. Thank you. You guys know this guy's only 25 years old? No. Like, well beyond his years. I mean, well done, Robert. I'm proud to call you a friend. All right, so we have time for the super special question. Who's going to ask it? Right there. Can I give uh, two answers to this question before I fall off the stool? <laughs> All right, so the first one, so a mentor of mine said, hey, stop being the best kept secret out there. You know, we, we truly believe that we're the core business service and, and all we come back to is working with people that wanna create impact. So if there's business owners out there that have big audacious goals and they have a vision to impact the community, I would love to have a conversation. My team would love to have a conversation with them, take them out for coffee, anything like that. So just you know, being more out there, you know, with our, our voice and our mission. The second thing I'd ask, I, I would ask each business owner that's really passionate about the business ecosystem, read the local economy solution. That book will change your mind about how even just Chamber of Commerce runs, how, you know, the economic development councils across, across um, the U.S. are run. So read that because um, we're going to be starting to plant seeds of some of those things we want, a grassroots movement around the change. Oh. Sir, you're welcome. There's your coveted cup. Um, 